Where can you find the best buffs for your men at arms? Well, the biggest buffs come from buildings, but terrain as shown here dictates where you can build them. As does location, is it home of the horse or are they fans of on foot? Does living by the water make a man tougher? The Vikings think so. Giving you a stationed heat map something like this. And even if you find a nice spot, are your locations belighted with cities and temples instead of castles? If so, where is the uncorrupted land for buffing stacks of your dream men at arms? The perfect duchy with the ultimate terrain, encasing your legions in power armor, a Salusa Secundus for your Saudakar. So that's what this video is about. The best terrains, some heat maps showing where, the lighter the shade, the better the buff, and an ideal duchy to make the most of them. For total buffs, we're considering all buildings are unlocked, so everything here is level 8. There's also a few traditions and texts that change what building buffs are. Coastal Warriors giving you toughness for having a port anywhere on a river or on the coast, which is nice. Another reason why Vikings are ridiculous. Woot Steel gives you access to the mighty wind furnaces, which are truly insane. They work with any men at arms, making the Indian coast the best place to station men at arms by far. And this is true throughout the game, nothing can compete with them. But not everyone wants to settle and play in India, and that is fine. A quick note, Woot Steel is a tech only available in the Deccan region, however. Finally, there is Ancient Miners for anyone who wants to get that incredible plus 4% increase to toughness in hills. And there are some others that help archers as well. I'm telling you this so you know that when we roll out the graphs and heat maps, these bonuses will not be applied for simplicity's sake. Otherwise, India would be blindingly white. I assume you have some basic knowledge of maths, and you can add the missing values yourself. As I alluded to earlier, the world is split into two major regions. One where you can build the hill grazing line, and the other where you can build the warrior lodge line. It is done on a duchy by duchy basis. However, these buildings can only be added to hills, mountains, or desert mountains. So the map where you can build these goes from this to this. It works independently of culture, so no matter how much you want to introduce hill grazing to, say, France, the people will never take to it. And say, if you were role-playing an Attila the Hun-like character, it may limit where you want to position your capital and culture. Also, I'm assuming you're willing to move your county capital. I'll be honest, something I didn't know I could do for an embarrassingly long time. So when I say Bohemia has six forest county capitals, it's only assuming you move around your county capitals to make it work when you can. Finally, there are many things that buff men at arms like traditions, I'm aware of them, but I'm not going to be going over them. The scope is terrain and buildings, and maybe duchy buildings and accolades briefly touched on at the end. I know we can hold baronies and temples for some faiths, but these are minus a building slot and I consider it beneath me to hold them. Finally, I would like to apologise for everything I'm about to mispronounce, please forgive me, and as always, pause if you need to. Let's begin. Archers are unique in that they only have one building that buffs archers and requires a specific terrain. The lumber mill chain, limiting variants of buffs, meaning they only have two real types of terrain, the better option, floodplains, farmlands, or any land covered in trees, and everything else a little worse. Not much worse, mind you. Archers do well pretty much anywhere. A minimum of plus 400 damage, as you will find out compared to, say, pikemen, is actually quite good, making them and, of course, crossbows pretty flexible. So looking at these damage and toughness heat maps, we see they are pretty good anywhere in the far north and the far south, or in the valuable lands along the Nile, the Tigris and the Euphrates. So bear that in mind, one of the best men-at-arms crossbows is pretty awesome wherever you place it. A safe option, guaranteed success. Mind you, if you've gone for Land of the Bow or Forest Wardens, you get an extra 40% toughness just for being in an ideal terrain, which is frankly silly, unfair even. Nile Archers and Metzanvartija? are already the best units in the game, amazing in this terrain, and now they have the optimal buff. Mad stuff. Otherwise, if you're looking for optimal duchies filled with the ideal terrain, we have these three duchies, all with four floodplain counties. For woods, you have swathes of land up here. But choosing forest over tiger, there are two duchies alone, with six possible forest county capitals. Bohemia and Transylvania, and Samogotia with five if you want to take advantage of the tradition easier. Or if you like to suffer Gamer Joker, maybe? With a full seven Tiger County Capitals. To boost your anti-elephant pakes, here is the ultimate place. Four jungle county caps, all with access to wind furnaces. 
or if inland there is Bengal with five. And the lands with the most farmlands are Bohemia, Transylvania and West Franconia, with three in Europe, and Pagan, Gauda, Lahore and Layakuja, with three in India. Finally, if you're using Coastal Warriors and have Vigman, you probably want to sit on the coast for that 80% toughness boost. If you want something with farmlands, you're going to need to go to India for anything more than two coastal farmland provinces. Otherwise, if you're happy in the woods, Northumberland has three potential coastal and woodland provinces. But if living in Northumberland is a bit too much to stomach, then maybe Jilland will do. Now we have our first unit that can use the Warrior Lodge, taking advantage of hilly terrain on these areas of the map, which will massively influence the less economically viable territory for given men at arms. As for stats, they tie for the highest possible at 520%. Admittedly, with only a base damage of 10 for the generic form, that isn't saying much, but pretty much all the hilly terrain is best and then pretty much all the ideal places for archers as we discussed earlier. Floodplains, farmlands, loads of trees, etc. So, if you have somehow come to the conclusion that skirmishes are the optimal doomstack for you, then to the hills we go. But looking at the heat maps, there are loads of hilly regions like Atalonia and Iberia that are all hill grazing areas, limiting the actual best areas to the Alps, Scandinavia and Tibet. Mind that using the cheaper, more numerous skirmishes in the mountains might negate taking advantage of the combat width penalties. Types like the Hohendar might struggle in the Netherlands as it is notable for its lack of rugged terrain. Another three variants find themselves sadly in the horse region, but the two sub-Saharan variants are suited nicely for their terrain location. Otherwise, we find ourselves back in Bohemia with access to five possible hill county capitals being the best option in Europe because hills are almost always better than mountains, or go anywhere in Tibet. There are mountains for days, pick a duchy, it's probably all mountains and hills. Amdo and Tuyuhan are the best with six hills each. And plenty of options exist in sub-Saharan Africa, loads of jungle, forest and hills, Toro, Kong and Ashanti being notable ones. Pikes have the biggest spread of damage and toughness. They are the best in hills and mountains similar to skirmishes, but they are awful, just really awful in deserts, so don't station them there. In fact, just don't use them there if you live there. Please just, just don't. Use camels. If you find yourself in Arabia with spears, you have messed up. That said, they are fine, stationed in floodplains. This spread of buffs is emphasized looking at the heat map. They are doing terribly in all the Middle East generally, bar round the Nile, Tigris or Euphrates. But because of warrior lodges and, crucially, hill forts, you're going to want to aim for rugged terrain. Italy and Scotland are plenty rugged for Pacheria and Siltron, but Zoop and Spears, well, they don't have much going for them at all. You can station them in the floodplains, but they don't excel there, and it's a sort of unit that relies heavily on its terrain advantage, so a bit problematic. But otherwise, pikes do well in Europe and India and Sub-Saharan Africa, so, you know, foot country. So pretty much the same duchies as before with skirmishers. Bohemia with a potential 5 hill territories is great, if you don't mind Mexican mountains, Savoie and Lombardy also do good. And anywhere in Tibet, it's all great. As for Bondi, these are strange pikemen. Whilst getting that extra 80% toughness from ports, they actually have a negative terrain bonus in hills, unlike their counterparts, and prefer plains or farmlands. So farmlands is ideal, but plains is okay. And there are plenty of places with plains and coast. But for optimal land, the best you can do is go to India, with two farmlands on the coast with access to wind furnaces, but otherwise if you want to stay way, way, way closer to home, the Duchy of Skane in Denmark is very good for optimal use. With heavy infantry, we get the type with the most number of unique men at arms. Therefore, by far, one of the most common types you'll see, and if you're role-playing, the most likely you're going to try and make work. The AI loves their unique troops, so for example, you will see the Mabarism dominating the Middle East, the Ars dominating Iran, Haskals dominating Europe and Europe, and Drazini dominating Russia. They're similar to pikes and skirmishes in that they get bonuses in warrior lodges, which means they generally do better in Western Europe, India, and Sub-Saharan Africa. They suffer terribly in, in the desert like pikes, but unlike pikes have a considerable boost in drylands and the steppes, strangely, due to the watchtower building, and have a small disparity in buffs overall. 
So, they are pretty flexible in most places, as heavy infantry doesn't suffer from terrain disadvantages. So use of them is pretty flexible too, unless you use absolute garbage like the Sarod. But bear in mind, and I should have mentioned this earlier, the Warrior Lodge will grant pursuit to slow lumbering troops. So a reason you may want hills over farmers. And there are many good hilly places as mentioned before. Bohemia, Savoie, Lombardy, it's all good. But now, the moment you've been waiting for, the Varingian veterans, and to a lesser extent, the Huskars. Here is a heat map for toughness with the port bonus included. But going off what we know, floodlands, farmlands, and any rugged terrain near the coast should be good. For example, somewhere like Greece is doing quite well, as is anywhere around the Nile, the Tigris, and the Euphrates. But again, just like other Scandinavian troops, India works wonders for the Varingian veterans. The highest buffs at the coast and the wind furnaces if you want monstrous stuff. Here on the coast has the two perfect county capitals, but there are a few duchies in the Ganges Basin that are very good with two ported farmland county capitals as well. Otherwise, if you want someone that isn't India, but is optimal and works well with the Varingian veterans terrain bonus, back to Greece. The Aegean Islands is top with four hill coastal county capitals to take advantage of, giving you a very strong central position in Europe to raid and rule to your heart's content. Appropriately and upsettingly close to Constantinople for the Emperor. But it's worth noting that the Varingian veterans are one of the few infantry units to have access to pursuit, and the Warrior Lodge in Hilly Terrain will give you an extra 200% on top of that. The first thing I notice is that Heavy Cav are able to get a higher max damage and toughness boost than Heavy Infantry, courtesy of the Curtain Walls Balloon. Because Curtain Walls are limited to the best terrain options, the consistently brilliant farmlands and floodplains which is something when your base damage is a minimum of 100. And weirdly, because of the buildings, mountains, hills, wetlands are pretty good too, which is a shame because heavy cav are awful there. In my opinion, the biggest mismatch of terrain and placement incentives. That is, unless you're using Tarkons who tolerate and the Monaspa who excel in rugged terrain, and therefore these buildings really do work. Throw in maximising the combat width penalty and you've got something really good going on. Except wetlands, please, for the love of god, do not set up there. But if you're fine with slopes, Atalonia with 6 hill county caps is pretty good, Bulgaria with 5 hills, a mountain, can make great use of hill grazing, and Fars in Persia if you're okay with desert mountains with 5 in total. So if you're in Europe and you want to flatten the enemy in the flat, Bohemia and Franconia are the places to be with three farmland county capitals, the latter having plains, which is, well, more optimal to fight and defend. Even India is a great place to set up, which is weird considering when you think of India you think of elephants, but maybe give heavy cab a go. they do counter the ever-present pig bowmen, which is nice. Finally, bear in mind floodlands and farmlands are often nearby rivers, so you can take advantage of the coastal warriors trait that said, you're not going to be using your heavy cab for their toughness now. Light cab is a funny one. It is influenced heavily by geography and culture. The Camry and hill grazing buildings are limited to certain parts of the world and making the spread of buffs to light cab the most stark. Which means that bespoke units like the Taswira and the Sehar Horsemen can take a major role in armies considering the buffs available. For troops like the loved Connie, there is some limited choice in the hills in Eastern Europe but for somewhere like Western Europe, even with hobbies, it is limited to its traditional supporting role entirely. But critically, if you want to maximise your light clav, you're best off getting horse lords if you can. As with territory, part of your culture, you can build the horse pasture building, taking the buffs to silly levels. A max of plus 5-20% on par with skirmishers. But likely more useful with a minimum damage of 22, and some getting great terrain bonuses. I should note, for say getting the maximum bonus in desert or drylands, you'll be taking up all your building slots of military buildings. So oh cool, it perhaps isn't that useful if you're bankrupting yourself, unless you instead plan to extract wealth from your vassals. But otherwise, to get that monstrous plus 5-20% damage to make your Tashwira godly, then Fars in Persia and Oman in Arabia have 5 potential desert mountain county capitals each. Otherwise, to get the peak of plus 520 damage 
and plus 410 toughness floodlands it is, which means Baghdad or any of these duchies on the Nile. Note that the Sahel Horseman is the only light cab with bonus floodplains. So give a round of applause for them and their incredible synergy. So now we come to the more unique men at arms types. Until recently there was only one horse archer option, but now there are two. If you're playing as someone who has horse archers, not the Asawera, it means you already have the tradition horse lords and you're a tribal. The horse herd building chain is limited to the steppe, but as mentioned earlier, spread any culture with horse lords and it can be built anywhere. Other than that, hill grazing is the only other building that buffs horse archers specifically. So what you get is two options. Good or bad? Well, damage anyway. Good options you will only find in horse country or floodplains or farmlands. But pretty much all floodplains are in horse country, leaving only some tiny pockets of acceptable stations for your horse archer cab outside the realm of the horse. Frustratingly, good terrains for stationing aren't good terrains for combat, and mountains, while giving good buffs, are downright awful for horse archers. So that limits you realistically to hills, Atalonia and Bulgaria being good examples of duchies that have plenty, with six and five hill county capitals accordingly. And for floodplains, you know the score, anything around the Nile, Tigris or Euphrates. And if you are going for the Aswira, I would advise you hybridizing to get horse lords as quickly as possible. There is only one camel men at arms type, and fortunately it is a really good one. I think camels are great, strong in the right terrain, having pursuit with good traditions and buildings that work with them to boot, no surprise for guessing where they are best stationed. Deserts and floodplains, because you need camelries to make them work. But what is truly wonderful is that their terrain bonus works wonderfully with optimal stationing, and the best place is floodplains, and if you're also interested in making money, floodplains are preferable to desert. So back to the Nile, Tigris and Euphrates we go. Otherwise, if you have some desert scheme or roleplay going on, a place called Naj has six potential desert county capitals, and Al Wahat has four oases, if you specifically need them for some strange reason. Finally, we reach the big boys. Perhaps the first thing you get if playing in India. No prizes for guessing where elephants do well. The jungle in India. There's only one kind of building that buffs elephants and it is the elephant tree and it can only be built in the jungle in India. Note that on the heat map I have included wind furnaces because if you're in India and you ain't using them, what is wrong with you? It'll make your elephants monstrous. And so, to get as many stacks of mega elephants as possible, you will want to settle in Chera. Four county capitals on the coast in jungle. Four wind furnaces, four elephant trees, you'll make everyone quake with fear. That is, until we extend the map into Khmer and finally get the Ballista Elephant. Now, if you found that interesting, but you want to see the data I was using, then I have good news for you. Attached in the description is a link for the spreadsheet detailing the maximum buffs you can get for each men at arms types with a list of buildings that you need. And also provided is a list of every duchy and the maximum number of county capital terrains you can possibly get, including county capital terrains that are also on the coast if you want to make sure of that. So if you find this useful as well as the video before, please leave a like, it helps tremendously. Or if you want more, perhaps overly insightful analysis of Crusader Kings, then you might want to subscribe. Otherwise, to the closing thoughts. Doing this has changed my perspective for some men at arms. For camels, the stationing aligns perfectly with their preferences. For heavy cab, it's a bit antagonistic, like being terrible in the mountains despite buffing them up there. For some, like Zoop and Spears, they look really good on paper, cheap, with not one, not two, but three counters, but in context they lack buildings to maximise their potential and work of the terrain bonuses they have. For terrains overall, there are two places that stand out, floodplains and farmlands, namely due to the regimental recruitment grounds giving a buff to anything stationed there. But farmlands come in small patches and potentially it is preferable to make huge sums of cash instead. 
Floodplains, however, are economically pretty solid, and fortunately, they come in big swathes. That said, not many troops get a bonus from either of these terrains. And it is nice to see that economically weak land can give decent bonuses to men at arms, like mountains having warrior lodges, perhaps implying that a hardy life makes a hardy man, giving you more of a reason to stay and play there than before. As promised, comparing buildings to the other big sources of buff in CK3, duchy buildings provide a good chunk of buffs, and this is applied universally to your men at arms. It also comes with a discount to maintenance. But realistically, you can only build two before you get the has too many duchies penalty. You can ignore that, but not everybody wants to. Also, they compete with loads of other very cool duchy buildings that you may want to build, like the ominous sounding Tower of Silence, the unique marches, or the highly prized, expensive and sought after option in 2020's Britain, a decent garden. And accolades, they give a good chunk of buffs universally, and give access to powerful unique variant, and let you increase your regiment size as well. They are silly powerful, but come at the cost of having to find someone who is eligible, ensuring you replace him when he inevitably gets mangled in all the wars you start, and nurturing them to their full glory to unlock the highest perk. So, buildings when compared to these two are far simpler, as in most terrains they don't compete with other buildings, six slots is usually enough to have a strong troops and a bang in economy, and if the land is poor and useless, at least you can breed strong troops. And once the buildings are built, that is it, no maintenance beyond the first investment, unless that is you move your crown lands to somewhere else. So, we're done. Building buffs and where to find them. Bye.